Graham, thank you very much for, for joining us for this catch up. Um, just to have a bit of understanding around, you know, some of the things that have been happening in South African cricket, some of the updates, etc. Um, can you tell us about the state of South African cricket, of cricket in South Africa and um, what the plans are for the next few months? Um, thanks. So, yeah, I mean, it's always difficult to try and find the starting point when uh, when you discuss. But I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I must say I'm quite relieved and I'm quite positive over the fact that with all the COVID uh, issues, um, the second wave in South Africa, that we've managed to, um, you know, manage that and get cricket played. Uh, I think uh, from our perspective, certainly at, um, you know, more elite level between franchises, our women, and um, you know our men's national team that we've been able to to run these BSC bubbles uh, with biosecure uh, facilities um, and to get cricket played. I mean, um, I think that has got to be our biggest goal is to to try and get as much done by by the end of the season. Um, there's going to be a focus on trying to to get semi-professional uh, underway um, as well with the domestic restructure. I think that's an important thing that we need to focus on now and trying to figure out that BSC and how it looks. Um, you know, we, I'm, I think, you know, putting this franchise uh, cricket together, um, the Momentum Cup in, in such a short space of time, just between Christmas and New Year, uh, and being able to get that played is 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 a huge credit to our medical team and the people that are implementing the BSCs and and the stress that we're all carrying in terms of managing that. Um, and then our woman, um, you know, started a series now in South Africa against against the Pakistan woman. Um, we're grateful for the support of of that. And then, <laughs> sorry, my little man's arrived. Um, and and yeah, so so get as much cricket played. So I'm just tying a shoelace. <laughs> Dad duty always on call. So you can hardly um, ask what they find you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Momentum One Day Cup and how that's gone off and how you're, uh, whether you're happy with, with how things have progressed so far, rain notwithstanding, of course. Yeah, I mean, obviously rain, you know, you, you go to such a great extent to to get these things together. I mean, the stress between Christmas and New Year to to make sure we could get that played. Uh, I think to to consider that we would have had probably 21 televised games in January between our women and our, and our franchise cup, uh, Momentum Cup, w w was an incredible effort. I mean, the amount of work that went into doing that and getting that set up and, you know, I think it, it's so easy and to take the simple route of cancelling all cricket at the moment. It's, it's, um, but the fact that we've been able to get it played and, you know, as you say, if, if the rain had stayed away, I think it would have been an exciting first, first few weeks. Um, the second part of that, that um, BSC and, and tournament is about to get underway. Um, so yeah, hopefully the rain will stay away and we can, we can talk as much about cricket. Um, so, so I think that's the most important thing for us is that we, we want to keep the conversation around cricket um and yeah and, and getting it played the proteas men are into their third international tour um how has that been how important has that been for you just as a director of cricket to get the national teams back into action particularly the men's team um with so so many world cups coming up um the t20 world cup this year next year and then obviously the 50 over world cup as well in 2023 yeah, I mean, it is a heavy white ball focus. I mean, I think, uh, you know, when we're sitting in the winter um, in the midst of lockdowns and COVID, you know, you, you often consider, and I think, you know, it's easy to forget, but all of us and, and players included were probably sitting there thinking, when when are we going to play again? When, 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 when will we be able to even get outdoors? Never mind play again. So I think to, to be able to reach that point where we, we got cricket underway with England in December, um, then Sri Lanka, um, you know, uh, to follow, and, and now we... The team being in Pakistan, I mean, I think, you know, it's going to be a really busy period for them. Um, I know it's challenging as well, moving from sort of these biosecure bubbles uh, to the next one, to the next one. But I think if we can finish our season, as I've said, with getting as much cricket in as possible, um, I, I know everyone is focused on results. But uh, as the director of cricket, I, I see it as an opportunity for us to to grow squads, um, to 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 see um, a number of players across the board, you know, I think it's just natural with COVID 
and the restrictions and how bubbles are being run that it's going to be impossible to play your your best team day in and day out, um, even though we want to achieve that as much as possible. But I think hopefully by April, we would have a, a really good idea of, 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 a, of a core group of players. Um, and, you know, let's hope that um, the results will, will come our way as well. Um, you know, I think my major focus, uh, which has been, uh, is, is on getting cricket played. Um, and, you know, our national men's team have been the pinnacle of that over many, many years. And, and I'm glad that they're up and running uh, and we're working on an FTP and you know, it's looking very busy. Um, and our goal will be that at, what, at some point we need to pin things down and, and really focus on, you know, who's going to be the best squads going to, to these World Cup tournaments and, and how that's going to look. Um, but at, at the moment, the focus is, is getting on as, as much cricket played as possible. I know that you're not pre you're not considerably results driven, but it's it must have been good to see the Proteas winning a Test series at home against Sri Lanka, particularly yeah, I mean, when after I the squad uh, against Sri Lanka. And I looked at that bowling attack on day one. You know, you you realise that, that you know there's a lot of work and development and, and growth that needs to happen uh, as well. It was a very young. Um, you know, a squad with 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 potential. So well, with that with that is going to come an element of learning, an element of sort of ups and downs. Um, uh, yes, we want our team to win as as much as possible. I wouldn't say that that's the defining thing for me this season. Um, you know, I, I would like to answer a few questions in my own head. Uh, you know, I think the selectors would want to do the same, and the coaching staff. You know, around uh, the potential that we have to move forward, the type of players that that put their hand up over the next few months. There's going to be a number of opportunities for players because of COVID bubbles and 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 the challenges we face around quarantine periods and and getting cricket played. So there are going to be uh, probably more opportunities available to players than, than maybe in in the past. Um, so I, I, I'm really excited to see who puts their hands up and 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 who you know who who are the the, the people that um, you know we can we can back into the future. Um, so yeah, I, 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 you know, I played the game hard, and I, I want our team to win as much, much as possible. But I'm also realistic around the challenges that we face on a daily basis uh, with COVID and 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 the bubbles. A lot has been said about this recently announced um, T20 squad that's going to be taking um, that's going to be taking on Pakistan. What were some of the thoughts and and the reasons behind um, you know having these drastically separated and and different um, squads between the Test and the T20 teams? Yeah, look, I think when you when you work on these BSC um, protocols uh, for COVID, you know, you work with the other member nations, and I, yeah. I think I need to start by saying that if we if member nations don't support each other and and get in and and um, and play cricket, uh, you know, cricket's going to find itself in a very challenging space. So, you know, when you work with these member nations, you, you, your objective is to find the protocols that, that work for both, you find the middle ground to be able to implement them um, and make them safe and, and get cricket played. So in working with Cricket Australia, we've we've come to a lot of those medical conclusions and, and how that's going to look. So, you know, there will be an initial quarantine period before that series. And uh, unfortunately, that meant that we would have to play two different squads uh, at the time. Um, I guess in, in, a, in, in, in a normal world, it, it's not ideal, but um, it does offer opportunities. Uh, and we would l really love to get our home summer, um, you know, completed. Um, and Australia are a big part of that home summer. We want to, you know, um, not only, you know, get it played, but we want to compete in that series. I think, you know, we saw, you know, from the Australia-India series, the hype around test cricket. Um, and I think it's going to be a great test of where we are as a squad. So we motivated. Um, the last time a test series happened in South Africa with Australia, it was a very heated one, and we all know what went on. So I think we're very excited to to be able to host Australia, but that comes with with certain restrictions and and medical protocols that um, that we're putting in place. And so we'll have to bring that test squad home uh, to start that and start their preparation and their quarantine period before that series starts. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, it's. There's been a bit of interest um, in the Proteas men's coaching staff um, in the last few days, particularly um, with the changeover from Prasanna Agaram to um, Rivash Gobind coming into, into the setup for, for the Pakistan tour. Can you tell us just a little bit more about that and, and set the record straight around Prasanna? 
Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think we first with Stane Prasanna, I mean, he's he's been uh, an integral part of that um, analyst position for, for 10, 11 years now. I mean, we brought, he started under under my captaincy, um, you know, from an IPL, you know, we, we picked up his ability. I mean, the objective was always for him to grow people in, in that position and develop, you know, South African people as well. Um, and I think we've reached the point with um, that role that one, um, we wanted a slightly different outlook on, on that person. Um, you know, um, the, the management team felt that it was crucial that they could get more of a coach in that position. So we identified Rivash Gopend, who's got a, a history of coaching and playing at, at top level. So we were very excited to be able to, to get him. Um, and also appoint a South African person into that role. I think it was time now the development uh, ha had been there. Um, and yeah, to, to, to really cover more, more bases, I think was important. Um, and to have someone around permanently in our high performance setup as well. And Rivash is going to offer us, you know, uh, the coaching element plus the data element and, and work with um, other people in, in that department. So we're excited to have uh, his all round capabilities with, with the national team and, and we wish him well. Thanks very much for that. Um, moving on to bubble life, um, it can't be easy for for the teams, you know, being in a bubble for an extended period of time. We've seen with the men's team who are currently in a what will end up being a three month bubble um, from from now onwards. Um, the women's team are also, you know, in their first bubble. Can you share with us the kind of interference that CSA is running in terms of um, mental health and ensuring the comfort and the well-being um, of the of the players as well as their support staff? Yeah, I mean, I, I think first to acknowledge that it's it's not simple and and easy. I, I mean, I um, I do feel for. Uh, the players who move from bubble to bubble, um, life is different at the moment for not, not only players, but I guess everyone in the world um, and the challenges that, that, that COVID has thrown at us. Um, I think we've we've tried to look at, uh, you know, different types of hotels. We've tried to offer, um, you know, more lifestyle type hotels where there's ability to get outdoors and, and still, uh, you know, get some air and fresh air and do some things in and around the hotel. Um, we've looked at uh, you know team rooms and how we can create some more entertainment for the players uh, and try and create a, I guess a bit of uh, normality in in what is a very abnormal um, thing to to be involved in um, and, and you know we've worked closely with Saka also on the mental side we're in constant constant contact with the players questionnaires details trying to stay ahead I guess of um, of any mental issues and trying to keep the dialogue as open and honest as possible uh, and and really get players you know communicating and, and so that we can deal with with the stuff that comes our way um, and yeah as you say since the next three months is going to be a tough period for for the men's national team they, they're going to move from from bubble to bubble as we we try and complete our our, our home season uh, and we'll have to manage that we'll have to manage that with players we'll have to manage that we'll have to you know constantly be uh, thinking on our feet um, but our objective is to produce a safe uh, and and get as much cricket played, a safe environment for players, and create a uh, you know a space where they feel safe and and, and happy. Um, so we we're trying that. We're learning all the time um, and uh, working together on this, which I think is is very important, and and working with Saka, which is very important. Next year's. Uh, uh, let's before I get to next year. Sorry, um, the women's team of just started uh, their their tour against Pakistan, which was really exciting and good to see, to see them back out on the park and playing cricket again. How important is a successful Proteas women's team to Cricket South Africa's bottom line? It's, well, I mean, we, we, we really focused on developing this team. I think we've seen, you know, in the World Cup last year, getting to the semi-final, um, you know, and I'd captured uh, everyone's uh, attention. Um, the women's team's also got a number of big white ball events coming. Um, I was very disappointed that we couldn't get the England tour at the end of last year un underway. We couldn't get the government permissions, and you know, you, you know, I thought that would have been a, a really um, you know big thing for our ladies. So I, I'm grateful that we've got that underway now. Um, that Pakistan women have, have supported us, and we've got this tour going. The fact that we've got it televised or six games televised, I think, speaks to 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 us that the work that we're trying to do to get it uh, more attention brought to the women's game. I, I think we've got a lot, a number of talented players. And the goal at CSA is how we beef that up, you know, from a competition perspective, how we grow that even more. I think every year the, the goal for us has got to be to grow the women's game and to invest in it uh, and to get it to the level uh, that we see uh, as right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think from our perspective, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's underway. Um, cricket is being played and our women are happy and uh, we've got to keep that going. And um, what's the FTP looking like for, for the women's team? Are there any tours in the works? There's a lot of planning um, on the FTP. Um, you know, there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes of, of getting cricket played. So, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a nice busy calendar and hopefully we can pull off everything that's, that's, that's in the pipeline um, and, and build them up nicely to the, to the world events uh, that are coming their way. Obviously, you know, for, for all our teams going forward, the, the number of white ball um, competitions, you know, world events, World Cups, T20 World Cups, that are going to be in the pipeline, you know, that's that's got to be our focus. We we really want to to find a space where both our teams are pushing for for trophies. Um, so you know, those are the goals, and, and how we can prepare our team best uh, with all the challenges that we have. Um, you know, that's that's all the behind the scenes conversations that we that we are currently happening. And finally, the Black Day ODI is going to be a really exciting fixture that's coming up this weekend, um, not only because, you know, of the change in the kit and um, all the merriment that goes with, with having a new look, but because of the cause that is being supported, um, the fight against gender-based violence. How important is it, um, you know, to Cricket South Africa that the women have their own standalone marquee event, um, one that is going to be something that they own and um, will rival and then eventually, you know, equal uh, Pink Day as has been happening with the men for the last 10 years or so. Yeah, I mean, uh, 100%. I mean, we, we know how important the GBV um, message is um, and, and to improve the way men treat women in our country. Um, and it's really great that our women have taken that on. I know it's been delayed because of COVID. It was meant to happen early in the year, but I'm just you know, extremely happy and almost a bit emotional that we're managing to get it underway and, and to get that message out there led by our Proteas women's team. I know the men's team will be right behind them in, in the messaging. Um, they've already started that with the England series. Um, and this will take it to, to a new level. And it's important that uh, we keep driving it. We keep trying to drive change in, in society for the better. Uh, and I'm really proud of, of the way our ladies are handling themselves. So hopefully it's a su successful day um, that it gets the message, that it gets the publicity that it deserves. Um, you know, pity that we can't have a full house uh, at, the, at any of our games, but in particular that one getting behind uh, what is going to be a, an important day and an important message.